So why not bring in somebody that knows offensive linemen probably better than any of us could ever imagine, right, Joey? And your former uh, alumni mate, right? Yes. My alumni mate from Brother Rice High School went on to Eastern Michigan. Corey's alum. Shout out to the Eagles. E- is it Eagles, right? Eagles, man. Eagles. Don't, I almost said Eaglets don't. like St. Mary's for stick. Hey, don't clown the Eaglets, man. <laughs> you, you guys are the baby birds. Yeah. TJ Lang was the real bird with Corey. So baby what up, TJ real. Lang? <laughs> what up, y'all? Can you hear me today? Yeah, yeah. TJ. Yeah. Annie in HD. Finally. Hey. Whose tree is whose tree is better, mine or Justin Rogers? <laughs> <laughs> I like yours, man. Oh, Justin, like Justin looks like what's his up, was hand painted that he did at uh, like, <laughs> like a, what's the, that the uh, drunk painting uh, class? Uh, painting with a twist. Yeah, there you go. A nice glass of wine while you paint a tree. <laughs> Seems like something TJ yeah. would do probably too. So TJ, man, how you feeling about that draft pick last night? Oh, guys, I mean, I think it's pretty unanimous around the city of Detroit today. It's a home run. You know, it's a home run. I think anytime you get a, a generational talent like that, that falls to you number seven. Look, if there were, you know, a couple of these quarterbacks decided to go back for their senior years, I mean, Penny Sewell probably would have been the number one pick, right? right. Um, but we just kind of saw that run of quarterbacks at the at the beginning. And thank God Cincy and Miami kind of fell into the trap of keeping their young quarterbacks happy, taking the receivers. And, uh, man, I mean, I had almost this the same reaction as uh, – as Brad Holmes had, you know, I wanted to go start working out and get back into shape because I want to go play next to that kid, man. He's going to be a special player for a long time. Yeah. So when you break down the film and you really watch him, I mean, the main question I got to ask you is, is he better than you? <laughs> Probably. I mean, listen, dude, like you, I mean, at least to start, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I, my first two years in the league, I was a backup and I didn't get a chance to start until my third year. But um, the crazy thing that, that I still can't really register in my mind is when you're watching this kid play, he opted out of 2020, but when you watch him play, you forget that he's an 18 and 19 year old kid. You know, I mean, he was 19 years old when he won the Outland trophy, which is the best lineman in America. And um, he's, he's 20. He's not going to be 21 until I think October or November of this year. And it's just kind of scary to think about his upside and his potential. Um, because I, I don't remember ever seeing a 19 year old, 20 year old kid, just out there mauling people the way that he does. And what is he going to be when he's 23, 24? I mean, he's only going to get better. And um, it's just, I mean, with the with the contract extension uh, to Taylor Decker, uh, Jonah Jackson obviously has three years left on his deal. Vitae has, you know, I think four le- four years left. Sewell's going to be here for at least five. Frank Ragnow is probably going to get an extension at some point in the line down the line um this could be a top five old line for for a lot of years to come and when you get a new quarterback in like jared goff and you put some other pieces around him that's their best friend you give the you you got got a good group of big guys in front of you you're able to run the ball pass protect i mean that's that's how you build a team and there's precedent from it too i remember even look at a couple years ago you know with the cleveland browns that were struggling they go out and draft jedrick wills last year tackle in the first round he's a day one starter they signed jack conklin boom they're a playoff team, you know. Long time ago, when I was playing, Dallas Cowboys used to be pretty bad. And then, like three straight years, they drafted uh, Tyron Smith, left tackle, and then Travis Frederick, the center, and then Zach Martin, right guard. And it's like, what are the what are these guys doing? And then they started winning 12, 13 games a year. So there's a lot of precedence with building your football team through the big guys and through the offensive line. And I think this is just a, an absolute home run pick for Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes. So you obviously won a Super Bowl and. That's freaking sweet. <laughs> you won a Super Bowl. Fun fact. With a man named Aaron Rodgers and yeah, yesterday. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool, Joey. <laughs> Let me, can I borrow it one day? Let me just borrow that thing one day. It'll be cool. But but yesterday, obviously, Aaron Rodgers, your boy, comes out and all that news. Like, what, what was your take on that? Because obviously you were around, so you, you've heard more than we have. Yeah, no chance. First of all, no chance you're ever getting to hold my Super Bowl ring. Uh, but second of all, <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, hey, if you I see think my yesterday, man, video from yesterday, I'm going to send it to you, TJ. You, you you would probably have some respect that you should let me borrow that. Well, right? Okay, well, if you got, if okay, sidetrack, but if you got timed in a 40, would you be able to break six seconds? He did not. <laughs> it was, I it, broke six. He did not? Six, 6.07 no, was the second one. Oh, 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 oh my man, that was his second time dude, at the 40. First one, I was like Kyle Pitts out there, <laughs> plus 1.5 seconds. Dude, what I was your 40 time, like, TJ? I bet I, could, I bet I could beat you in a, in a, in a 40, Joey. 
What was your 40, TJ? Uh, coming out, I think I was uh, like high 50s, 508, low 51s. Mm, damn. Um, but I didn't have, man. I mean, you know, I didn't go to the combine. Um, um, I, I kind of, we didn't have the facilities back at Eastern that a lot of teams do now. I mean, when I was running my pro day, it was like 25 degrees outside and windy. I was happy about it. But look, man, I, I think, uh, you know, the timing and all that stuff with offensive linemen, yeah, there's a little bit of importance. But you know what? A lot of these top Hall of Fame players, guys that ran five fives, five sixes. You know, you can either play O line or you can't. But um, going back to the Aaron Rodgers stuff, I mean, I think uh, you know, I think going back a year from uh, you know a year a year ago when they draft when they uh, he was on a couple shows on draft day and he was talking about uh, you know a lot of really good receivers in this class really hope we can get one of those guys you know it'd be awesome to get a young guy in another playmaker blah 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 and they'd trade up and take a quarterback without <laughs> even kind of telling Aaron and I think that kind of hurt him a little bit you know I think just knowing Aaron and being friends with him um, knowing his personality I think that kind of stung a little bit right and obviously look they did something right because he went on just on a rampage last year one MVP just ridiculous numbers um, but at the end of the day you know, they made it to back-to-back NFC Championship games and, and never never got past that. So they're obviously still a couple pieces away. And playing with Aaron, I think the one thing that he's always kind of wanted the Packers to do is, you know what, stop worrying about the future so much. You know, stop worrying about drafting guys that are going to develop and play maybe in two or three years or maybe when I'm gone. Um, and, and worry a little bit more about the now. You know, go, go all in for now. If that's doing something uncomfortable like trading up or trading a future pick or whatever it is to go get a player, like do it you know and i think yesterday's news i think was <laughs> strategically timed probably on his part or his his agent's part right because i think that was kind of their payback from okay you know you guys kind of threw a wrench into our plans last draft but let's uh, let's throw a little wrench into your plans <laughs> this year so um but you know and i stayed up last night to watch who they were going to pick i was going to it was going to be interesting to see are they going to trade up and try to get one of these receivers what are they going to do they take a cornerback, and that and the two things kind of hit me. First one was like, oh, man, Aaron's not going to be happy. But the second <laughs> thing was, look, their defense is really the thing that's been holding them back from getting to Super Bowls, right? I mean, you look a couple years ago, they just got throttled by the 49ers in the NFC Championship game. Last year they got yeah. throttled by Tampa Bay. Um, so it's it hasn't been their offense. It's been their defense that's been struggling. So I don't know much about the kid they took out of Florida. I know he's fast as shit. He ran like a 4-2-5. Um, but if he's a guy that can go in and play in Green Bay from day one and be an impact starter, he might be the impact guy that they need to get over that hump, not necessarily an offensive weapon. Maybe it is on the defensive side of the ball that they were missing one or two pieces um, to get over that hump because that's all Aaron's ever really wanted. Just show me you guys are all in. You know, stop drafting my replacements. <laughs> let's get out here. Let's get out here. Let's go compete. Let's, let's try to win a championship right now. You know, it absolutely just breaks my heart to see Green Bay infighting and falling apart like this. Like, I, I just feel so bad, and I hope they can get it together before the season because I, I really want them to do well. <laughs> Couldn't even say the whole thing. Yeah, no one ever did. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't Nick, even get that I'm, out. I'm sure, I'm, sure you speak for, I'm, sure, I'm sure you speak for most of Detroit with that one. But, yeah. no, it's, it's funny, man. I think it's just uh, knowing, knowing Aaron Rodgers, man, it's just, you know, he's, he's, a, uh, he's a very passionate person and um, – you know, he doesn't uh, He doesn't forget things, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned the biggest thing about focusing on now, and that's what I'm so happy about the Detroit Lions team and the organization doing yesterday is drafting Panay Sewell showed that they were focused and that they were invested in Jared Goff. We got him for two years, so we don't need that replacement right now just yet. Right, yeah, and I think, hey, maybe if – I mean, it was kind of a – Maybe if one of those top three guys slid a little bit, you know, with the quarterbacks, with Lance or Zach Wilson, or uh, I mean, when Justin Fields was there, I, I'm sure they probably had some conversations. But look, I mean, I think they brought in Jared Goff to be the guy, you know, and I think Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell have talked about they've brought in a lot of guys uh, so far this year that were good players, are good players, but kind of feel slighted, you know, maybe by former teams or maybe not getting the re due respect that they they've earned and they deserve. And I think that they want to light a fire under these guys and kind of revive some careers. And they've got some guys in there that are some badass, tough football dudes. And I think Jared Goff, uh, he's young. What is he, 25, 26? I mean, 26. he was in a Super Bowl two years ago, you know? So 
Um, we talked about it. I mean, he obviously went through some hard times in L.A., especially last year. But the guy's a talented football player. And I think what they, what the system that they want to build uh, with the toughness and biting kneecaps and all that shit, they want to run the football. You know, they want to run the football. They want to play action. They want to pass protect. And to shore up the offensive line and make sure that's a strength, not only – this year kind of throwing in a patch but like long term i think it shows a, a, a lot about the competency of these guys they know how to build a football team and listen panay sewell still got to come in he's still got to show he's worthy of playing he's still got to work his ass off he's a young kid there's going to be a lot of guys in that offensive line room that that are going to give him some good competition but you know what you don't take a kid at seven with that talent and not expect him to be a day one starter he's going to be an impact player for, for a long time for this organization so in day two of the draft, we asked Justin Rogers uh, from the Detroit News, who was just on with us, what, do you, what his home run pick would be. What do you think would be a home run pick for the Lions today? Well, I mean, if there's any way that, you know, there's there's a receiver. I can't remember his name. Elijah Moore, maybe. Yeah. From <laughs> three for Ole three, Miss. baby. Is Ole Miss. That the That's who I want, too, man. Yeah. I mean, hey, if he if he somehow falls, he's kind of a speedy, quick guy. There are there are there are also some other receivers out there. I think Terrence Marshall, the big kid from LSU, um, is a really good talent too. Um, obviously, they need some you know need some help on the on the perimeter on the offensive side. But hey, look, if they fall in love with a defensive player too, I mean, don't rule that out, you know. But I think there's going to be some receivers sitting here tonight that can come in and be day one starters for you. And if you're able to get out of the first two rounds with a starting offensive lineman and a starting wide receiver, the rest of the draft, you're pretty much, hey, let's just load up on defense. Let's just take the, the highest-ranked defensive player we have on the board for the last you know, five, six picks, whatever it is they have. So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens tonight. I mean, yesterday with all the hype and everything uh, about what, what could happen in the trades and just so many unknowns, I mean – I don't want to say it was a boring draft, but it kind of played out the way that everybody thought it was going to play out. You know, maybe I think the one surprise was Justin Fields falling to 11 and the Bears jumping up to get him. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it kind of played out just the way everybody kind of thought, right? So um, we'll see. I mean, we'll see what happens tonight. I, I wouldn't put it past the Lions to maybe be aggressive. You know, if there's a couple guys they like in the second round because they've got a lot of capital next year. they got a couple – uh, you know, first round pick from the Rams. Don't, don't, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if they're going to trade those to get move up in the second, but there's a guy they really like. They could come out of this draft with three or four starters that, are, that we're going to see starting in the fall for and playing big time football. Absolutely love it, man. I, I, I just love hearing fellow Eagles just drop knowledge. It just, it just brings <laughs> a tear to my eye. <laughs> Thanks, Corey. I just love how, like, it, it feels like for the first time in a long time, all the Detroit Lions like group one pride is on the same page like we're all okay we're all on board with uh sewell and we're all like we, we just talked to justin rogers talking to tj lang you know terrace marshall and then of course elijah moore is the first people out of there like we're all kind of in lockstep about what this team needs and i i feel like for the first time the upper management understands what this team needs too so it's not just the wisdom of the crowd speaking yeah, there's a lot of excitement. I'll tell you that much. And I think for the fans, it's easy to kind of get lost in the Devontae Smith, Heisman, 22 catch, you know, 22 touchdowns last year. Holy crap, let's go get this guy. But uh, the thing about Lions fans is they're educated, man. You know what I mean? Like they know what this team needs. They know how to. They know what it takes to build a football team, and they know what kind of style of football they want to see their team play. Um, get get a big offensive lineman isn't the sexiest pick ever, but. You know what? In five years from now, maybe three years from now, when they're out there uh, beating a hell out of teams, I mean, it's it's going to be it's going to be worth it. But like you said, Stick, I think you know, look, looking at the last three specifically, I mean, look, a lot of questions around the Hawkinson pick. You know, at eight, turned out to be a really good player, right? Pro Bowl right. player for him. Okuda, I don't know. You know, obviously he had some struggles last year, but there wasn't a lot of excitement around that pick. Um, but let's see what he if he gets better. I think you really got to go back to the to the last home run pick, I mean, kind of putting those two guys aside right now because they're still young, is probably the last offensive lineman they took in the first round, Frank Ragnow. And at the time, I remember went watching the draft and everybody, uh, you know, kind of working the draft a little bit. Who the heck is this guy? What are we doing? You know, taking a center, Frank Ragnow is, <laughs> you know, all pro center. So it, it, it obviously worked out for him, and I think they have uh, even higher hopes for Panay Sewell. 
I, I know we all do here, and it, it was a big moment last night. If if you want to go back and watch the reaction video from everybody at our draft party, <laughs> like honestly, they we had some hot chicks chanting Sewell uh, unprompted, <laughs> like during the fourth pick, during the fifth pick, during the sixth pick, like. Even the girls wanted an offensive lineman. And as a big man, that's got to make you feel good. Offensive linemen are trendy now, baby. Dude, man, I tell you what, it's a, it's a, it's a different world than when I came in. You know, offensive <laughs> linemen are finally starting to get some love out there on social media and get their names out a little bit. But, um, you know, I was on the edge of my seat, man. When, that Miami, when I saw Cincinnati take Jamar Chase and Miami pick was in, I was like, oh, my God, please say, just please don't say Peninsula. Please don't say Peninsula, right? And uh, and they, they took another receiver, man. Everything just it, you couldn't have asked if you're Brad Holmes and you're John Dorsey and you're uh, uh, Dan Campbell. I mean, you could not ask for a better dream scenario than what happened last night. Yep. Well, I couldn't ask for a better dream scenario than having TJ Lang check in with us the day after the draft, too. So thank you for your time this morning, man. And I appreciate you hanging me on the wall in the background. <laughs> a little homage. I, just, just a nice little reminder when you're walking through the house. And I love it, man. Let's cut out a picture of stick on one of the little tree branches <laughs> over there. <laughs> little baby face. <laughs> yeah. I got to take... I got to rip some branches off and then we'll, we'll get you <laughs> uh, Thank you, TJ, man. We appreciate your insight. And as always, you're just a great guy to talk to and, you know, Detroit legend here with us for sure. Yeah. Good catching up with you guys, man. Have a good weekend. Talk to you later, man. See you, TJ. Enjoy the draft tonight. Day Woo. two, man.